Hi friends, so we are going to see Yojana, October month 2022. The topics are geoscientific explorations, safeguarding oceans and water governance. So in that first article is geoscientific explorations. So in that first one is, so it is related to paragraph 1, paragraph 2, 3 and 4. So in paragraph 1, it speaks about Geological Survey of India, so which was established in the year of 1851. So they are responsible for geoscientific explorations in India. So we already see the year it was established by Britishers. And the primary mandate, so mandate is in pa given in paragraph 2. So mandate is nothing but their objective. So what are the primary objective of this organization is? One is to do the geological survey of India. So primary objective is uh, to a geological survey. So geological aspect is more about studying the earth and its uh, basic rock types and all. That is a very basic understanding of geological survey and also focusing on explorations. So potential for explorations especially related to minerals. So, so this is the primary objective of geological survey of India. That is the mandate that is given in paragraph uh, 2. So paragraph 3 focuses on natural resource assessment. So geological survey also focusing on natural resource assessment and augmentation. So assessment is focused on so where we got the natural resources in India in different parts of India. To give an example of natural resources, we know that uh, for running our economy, industrial economy especially, we need to have iron, uh, sorry steel, aluminium, all these are considered to be natural resources, coal, natural resources. So assessment is they will check across India where we have the pocket of this uh, natural resources and how to augment, how to uh, uh, make sure that it is being used very effectively. So that is the aspect of uh, geological survey of India and especially for public goods. So for public goods, so that is given paragraph 3 and paragraph 4. So right now we can see that uh, we have this in India national mineral exploration policy. So this, uh, this is the recent one that is 2016. So this clearly indicates that so in Indian government we have a policy for exploring minerals. Okay. So that minerals again it is related to uh, running the economy of the country either related to industrial economy or even minerals can also be exported. So that comes the importance of this mineral exploration. So this geological survey of India primarily focused on aiding this national mineral exploration policy. This policy focuses on pre-competitive baseline geoscientific data, geoscience data. So geoscience data and uh, they are also responsible for geoscience data repository and also probe mineral deposits. So as per this mineral exploration policy, this is the primary focus is first they want to identify this baseline geoscience data. So pre-competitive means it is more about commercial aspect of exploration. Before that they need to have some scientific data where, where are the potentials for exploration is available and geoscience data repository is collection of all those data. It is collecting all the histo historical geoscience data right from 1851 we have the geological survey of India. So they are able to have this repository of data which can be effectively used to make some uh, decisions on which how to explore minerals or where minerals are located or simply of saying this is uh, like uh, creating a big data in technical terms or technological terms and also prob probing mineral deposits. So this is the primary focus of this uh, paragraph 4. Next we go for next page paragraph 1, 2, 3. So in paragraph 1, so geological survey of India is responsible for mapping, pan India mapping. So they are doing pan India mapping. So as a uh, common uh, individual or as a students in our school days, we are exposed to maps and mo most of this time these maps are uh, either for uh, phys physical map will be there. Physical map consists of uh, uh, rivers, uh, mountains, deserts and we have this administrative maps where India is being divided into different states, capitals. This is the what we are exposed to. Apart from this, a lot of other mapping is also done in the country and Geological Survey of India do certain mappings. For example, first one is National Geochemical Mapping. So National Geochemical Mapping. The next thing is National Aero Geophysical Mapping. And next we, ha next we have Systematic 
systematic thematic mapping. So, these are the different mapping created by Geological Survey of India which is effectively used by various departments of Indian governments for their administrative activities. So, these are the different mapping being done and uh, so especially focusing on natural resources and uh, geosocial issues. For example, these mappings are used for primarily natural resource explorations and geosocial issues. What is geosocial issues means? For example, landslide. So, to understanding the landslide of a region, this um, mapping can be effectively used. So, that is paragraph 1. So, paragraph 2 focuses on regarding this natural minerals. So, augmentation of geological society, geological survey of India focusing on augmenting. So, natural minerals and coal resources and why this become more important is right now as part of GDP. When we say GDP, there are three major areas in GDP. One is agriculture, industries and services. In that industrial sector, we have mining as one sector. So, right now this mining also contributes for economy. So, right now augmenting natural minerals and coal resources is part of mining activity which drives the economy. Okay. So, so geological survey of India has a direct contribution to Indian economy by providing all the data for natural minerals mining and also for uh, coal mining. The next thing is paragraph 3 speaks about so, especially this geological survey of India so play an a very active role in uh, exploring, exploration of strategic and critical minerals. What is strategic and critical minerals means? These are the mineral resources which is more important for the country's economic well-being and also for the national security dimensions. So, they have given a list of strategic minerals like tungsten or molybdenum, nickel, lithium. Etc. So, why they are called the strategic minerals means right now we know that entire world is driven based on technology especially information and communication technology where we have hardwares for it and the hardwares are majorly created through this uh, uh, technology uh, uh, through this minerals that is the reason it is called as uh, critical minerals and why it is called as strategic minerals is we know that right now the entire world we are uh, we are right now governments creating a law for data protection all those things. It is entirely based on the idea of technology and hardwares and all those things. Even to give a comparison, Indian government banned Chinese apps because uh, uh, data have been transferred to Chinese servers and hardwares play a major role in it. So, that is the reason it is called as strategic minerals because right now the entire technological world is dependent upon certain minerals and whoever controls the minerals controls the technological aspect of hardwares. So, that is the reason it is called strategic minerals. So, these are, these are the minerals which plays a major role in it and this uh, exploration is done in collaboration with Geoscience of Australia, Geoscience of Australia. So, this is given in this page and uh, next page paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 6. So, paragraph 1 speaks about this importance of, uh, so online core business integrated system, online core business integrated system. So, it is primarily focused on this uh, geoinformatics, the role of geological survey in geological survey of India in geomatics. So, geological survey of India in geomatics and right now uh, they also created this Bukosh as a flagship, flagship means important, flagship geospatial portal. So, Geological Survey of India is not only related to mapping of India or collecting all this data, they are also creating a portal, so which, can, which is effectively used for uh, providing the data to all other various other departments. Okay. And right now, we have this uh, national geo, this is all aspect of uh, data sharing, national, so geoscience data repository, this is given in paragraph 2. So, that Geological Survey, uh, Survey of India is responsible for uh, having this repository of data collections. So, it is regarding data collections used by various go other government departments. So, data repository is nothing but collection of data. Okay. That is given paragraph 2. Whereas, in paragraph 3, right now Geological Survey of India also play a important role in the geosocial issues. So, that is an example given regarding this landslide hazards. So, Geological Survey of India and landslide hazards. So, uh, where national landslide susceptibility mapping is being done, national landslide susceptibility mapping. So, they are finding potential areas of landslide through this mapping and uh, this uh, this is done in 18 states and union territories, 18 states and union territories. 
and this is being uh, done in collaboration with that is given in paragraph 4 that is done in collaboration with British Geological Survey and uh, this acts as an early warning mechanism. So, early warning mechanism for landslides. So, even though we say Geological Survey of India is a purely scientific organization, but they have a direct impact on common man's life because they are doing a mapping of landslide potential areas which data can be shared with district administrations where they act as an early warning mechanism for the common man. So, that is there. And para, uh, so, paragraph 5 and right, right now also they are responsible for this system so geodetic parameters this is regarding earthquakes. So, regarding earthquake also they play a very active role by sharing this data for that they have this global navigation satellite system which is used for crustal movement monitoring network. So, we can see the cross purpose usage of this navigation satellite also to effectively use for this earthquake monitoring and they have established this 35 stations of this across India where uh, Geological Survey of India has played an active role. So, right now Geological Survey of India has an impact in uh, controlling landslides, positive impact and also regarding earthquake. The next uh, paragraph 1, 2 and 3. In paragraph 1, we can also say that Geological, so geological Survey of India also have an active role in climate change, controlling of climate change. So, how they are able to do that thing is uh, by studying glaciers. So, glaciers, glaciers are considered to be the proxies of climate change. What is proxies means to understand climate change? If you want to take one aspect of the planet earth to understand us, you need to uh, study glaciers so that you can understand the climate change impact in our uh, planet earth. So, that is the reason they are called as proxies. Without studying the entire uh, planet earth, we can study glaciers to understand what are the climate change impact. That is the reason it is called as proxies. Okay. And Geological Survey of India right from 1974, they, they are monitoring the glaciers, so monitoring glaciers in India, especially when you say glaciers means it will be in Himalayan ecosystems, Himalayan ecosystems. Then apart from this, so they are also monitoring uh, uh, geological uh, studies and they are also doing this, uh, so glacial studies, so that is given in paragraph 2. So they are also doing, so glacial studies in polar regions of Antarctica polar regions of Antarctica. So, polar regions of Antarctica especially focusing on climate change. And finally, last paragraph. So, it is Geological Survey of India is so promoting a platform that is Central Geological Programming Board. So, primary objective of this is uh, more administrative uh, dimensions that is to avoid duplications and wastage of resources. So, please understand geological studies done by a lot of other organizations to their requirements. So, right now based on this uh, geo, uh, central geological programming board as data are shared in this particular board. So, that uh, other organization does not want to spend time on this. They have given examples like uh, 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 central ministries, PSUs and other institutions are doing it. For example, PSU is going to locate some important industries where they do a geological study. For that they can use the data is already there. So, they does not want to waste their resources and duplicate the work. So, that is the primary aspect of central geological programming board. So, these are the informations regarding Geological Survey of India and if there is any main questions regarding research institutions and how research institutions are helping in uh, uh, people's well-being, all these informations can be used and if there is any specific questions on uh, geological aspect also this informations can be used or all this information can be used as a single point in your uh, answer writing. For example, if there is a question on how to control landslides or how, how to control uh, earthquake, all this scientific data can be used saying that Indian government has already respond, respond positive directions to minimize the impacts. Okay. So, next uh, uh, article is safeguarding oceans in that paragraph 1. So, regarding safeguarding oceans that this paragraph says about the basic facts of importance of oceans in planet earth. They say two thirds of earth so, uh, is surrounded by water surrounded by water and uh, in that when you say water means oceans hold 96.5 percentage. So, point is two third of the earth is water in that two third of the earth 96 percentage or 96.5 percentage ocean remaining only we have rivers, ponds and glaciers all this comes under the aspect of remaining, uh, uh, remaining water or we call it as fresh waters and this is more important ocean is considered to be the most important for humankind. We will see how it is more important. So, that is given in this first page paragraph 1, so paragraph 2, 
and paragraph 3. So, in paragraph 1, so regarding this ocean study, we have this National Institute of Oceanography. So, National Institute of Oceanography, which is being located in Goa, which is part of CSIR, that is as a Council for Scientific and Industrial Research and this is the most important organization to study oceans across the world and especially across India and uh, recently they have this, uh, it is given in paragraph 2. So, recently there is a project which uh, called as RV Sindhu Sadhana. So, recently a uh, research work is done, so research work is done based on this particular uh, name where 73 scientists went and studied the oceans based on this and all from National Institute of Oceanography and uh, they started from uh, Vizag port of India and covered the entire uh, uh, yeah, India 90 days and they have done uh, research through a research vessel. Okay, research vessel or research ship is being used for it. The next thing is uh, the primary objective of this is in this particular research that is given in paragraph 3. The primary objective of uh, this research ship is RV Sindhu Sadhana Marine Research Ship is to map genomic and proteomic diversity. So, diversity of Indian Ocean. So, genomic and proteomic diversity of Indian Ocean. Genomic is nothing but understanding the gene aspects of Indian Ocean and proteomic we will see that right now. So, that is paragraph 1, 2, 3 which speaks about what the term called proteomic means. So, they say proteomic is catalyst in biochemical reactions. So, biochemical reactions. So, every human body have biochemical reactions and simple as we eat food that converts into energy all this guy is called as biochemical reactions and proteomic act as a catalyst in it. By studying this proteomic in Indian oceans, they are able to understand the life cycle of animals in it. So, uh, life, uh, life cycle of those uh, uh, constant part of it, especially organisms and uh, so, which occurs in organism that survive in different ocean conditions. This study of branch of biology is called as proteomics. So, whenever you study the role of protein, especially proteomics is focused on protein. So, how they play a role in biochemical reactions of organisms in oceans that is called proteomic. That is given pa paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. Apart from studying the scientific aspects of uh, Indian Ocean, so they are also responsible to study this trace metals. So, trace metals are nothing but uh, manganese, cobalt, iron, nickel, etc. So, which helps in the growth of organism. So, to understand how this metals play an active role in it. So, this also helps in understanding the met, uh, mineral constituents of the ocean. And the second main objective is given in paragraph 3. So, uh, to unearth informations of this trace metal, information of trace metal. And next thing is paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. So, in paragraph 1, so it is related to this deep ocean mission. So, it is one of the re recent mission of Indian government. So, where they want to explore Indian oceans. In the deep ocean mission, they say certain aspects, basic facts that is 30 percentage of Indian population depend on oceans. So, there comes the reason for understanding ocean well because 30 percentage of Indian population depends upon ocean for their life, livelihood, social aspects and all those things and uh, 2021 to 30 is celebrated as UN decade of ocean science for sustainable development, sustainable development. So, with this aspect uh, government of India focusing on this deep ocean mission for 2030, so we need to establish a new India, new India means a developed India by 2030, new dimensions for India where blue ocean economy comes into picture or blue economy comes into picture. So, what is blue economy means focusing more on in ocean as a source for eco economic well-being. Right now, we are exploited our land resources for economic well-being. Right now, we are exploited our human resource for economic well-being. For example, we have used service industries for our growth. So, next area for our growth is uh, we need to focus on ocean as another medium for our growth. And we have a target for economy 5 trillion. 5 trillion economy, we need to explore all new possibilities. One is exploring oceans. So, by New India by 2030, blue economy should also be contributing to our uh, well being. So, that is the reason why we have this deep ocean mission. In the deep ocean mission, so primary focus is given in paragraph 3 what, what Indian government is going to do. One is developing technologies for deep sea mining. So, 
first one is deep sea mining. So, under deep ocean mission, they are focusing on deep sea mining that is technological development. And second point and thing is uh, to focus on ocean climate change advisory services, development of ocean climate change advisory services by understanding advisory services by understanding oceans. Third one is technological innovations for exploring deep sea biodiversity. Still, we are not able to understand what are the uh, organisms in the deep sea which has a, a positive impact on uh, our planet and also on humankind. So, that is exploration also need to be done that is part of this deep, deep sea ocean mission. And next thing is uh, deep ocean survey, survey of oceans and finally, maritime center. So, energy and fresh water from oceans. So, oceans has a potential for energy and fresh water and maritime center establishing maritime center for ocean biology. So, these are one of the important objective of deep ocean missions. We have around uh, 6 uh, objectives starting from technology selection for deep sea mining to uh, um, energy and fresh water usage of ocean surveying oceans all is part of this deep ocean mission. Okay. There is a new area where Indian system is exploring this paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 and paragraph 5 Samudrayan is a deep sea ocean expedition uh, mission or submersible. So, developed by India. So, that was here in 2021 we went for this. This is a technology a platform and it is a like a submarine which is being used to understand deep sea oceans. So, this is a technology which few countries have and we have India has developed its own aspects. So, understand the ocean uh, life ok that is there paragraph 5. And paragraph 6 speaks about what are the problems existing for oceans. One is because of increasing human population and its impact on ocean increasing human population. Next biggest problem is tourism. So, tourism has an impact on ecosystem of oceans and industrial chemicals release of industrial chemicals. The next thing is pollution. This all results what we call it as there is a term called dead zone. So, right now in ocean there is a term called dead zone. One of the reason is because of this aspect. In this dead zone there is a vacuum of organism that is called dead zone. So, right now they say that dead zones are increasing in oceans. That is vacuum of uh, biodiversity or uh, vacuum of uh, organism in oceans called dead zone. Primary reason because of this, this numbers are increasing in oceans right now. Okay. So, this is given in the second news article. Third we go for water governance. So, paragraph 1. So, regarding water governance paragraph 1, they have given a case study that is in Kutch. So, Kutch is a part of Gujarat, what is called of Gujarat and there was a mass migration of pastoral communities. So, these are communities depends upon cow, goat for their livelihood and uh, they graze across places. They are called as pastoral communities uh, like Maldaris. This name you can remember it, Maldaris paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So, Maldaris have mass migration one of the major reason for this thing is lack of water. So, so lack of water or drought resulted in mass migration of Maldaris. So, this, this is a case study you can use it for your answer writing any questions regarding drought or impact of uh, desertification all this you can use as an example how in Gujarat Kutch region Maldaris is a pastoral counties went for mass mi uh, migration. They came out of that locality because lack of water that is given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So, they say about the importance of uh, water. So, fresh water in India around 85 percentage is being consumed by agricultural purpose. Fresh water means take example of river water 85 percentage being con consumed by uh, agriculture. So, there comes the importance of how effectively to use water in agriculture. So, there comes the idea of this micro irrigation, micro irrigation and participative irrigation management and there is even a tagline called per drop more crop. This clearly shows how our Indian system is moving towards a new level of water governance. So, efficiently use water in agriculture because 85 percentage of fresh water goes to agriculture. So, that is given in paragraph 2. So, paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraph 3. So, in paragraph 1 to show the importance of uh, uh, water right now in the year of 2019 ministry of Jal Shakti was created, ministry of Jal Shakti was created by the present government and there also Jal Shakti Abhiyan. So, Jal Shakti Abhiyan was launched as a mission mode initiative. This clearly shows the seriousness of our government 
towards water governance and water conservation. They created a new ministry and there was a mission mode uh, program was uh, uh, focused on it. And, and under this they primarily focused on uh, water conservation. So, they focus on water conservation especially on 256 districts which are considered to be water stressed. So, right now in India we have 700 plus districts very close to 730, 740 districts we have in India. In that around 256 districts or 300 districts are considered to be uh, uh, water stressed and 256 is very precise and for that they have created a specific program of this water conservation and uh, it want, they want to make this as a people's movement. So, this water conservation measure is not to be seen as a government's effort, it should be more like a, like a people movement that is Jan Andolan. So, government clearly understood the way a success of any program results in people's participation. So, they want to make this as a people movement. Okay. The next thing is paragraph 2. Now, another major important aspect of water resources is which we need to focus on river Ganga because that is a major water resource for entire India. Uh, especially northern states literally depends upon river Ganges. So, for that we have this Namami Ganga program. So, especially focusing on so regeneration of river Ganges and especially this focus on multi-agency approach. So, multi-agency approach means to make Ganges revive, it is not should be the effort of one particular government department, it should be a collective effort, a department that is called multi-agency approach and they have primarily focused on these major areas, one is pollution abatement, they want to control the pollution, second one is improving ecology of Ganges, and next thing is strengthening people river contact because river Ganges is not seen only as a river or a water resource, it has a cultural significance also. So, that government was very keen to understand the interaction between uh, river and the people and also to make it more sustainable. So, that is the reason we have this people river contact and uh, research and uh, knowledge and management. So, they focus on research of river Ganges and its conservations that is given paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. So, we have this Jal Jeevan mission primarily focused on supplying drinking water to supply tap water to families especially rural India. Paragraph 1, 2 and 3. So, in paragraph 1 regarding Jal Jeevan mission it says that so by 2024 all rural home need to have tap water that is the objective of this Jal Jeevan mission and uh, it is in partnership with uh, state governments and uh, creating assured water supply. So, state partnership is part of it and assured water supply. Because of uh, taking drinking water to the rural homes has a lot of be uh, benefits, one its health, benef health benefits where uh, water plays a major role in uh, health of the family and especially the most portable drinking water and the next thing is uh, it relieves the stress of women because uh, mostly women are the water collectors of any rural family, they spend a lot of time on collecting waters. If water reach, uh, drinking water reaches to the family that helps women to spend a lot of time in uh, skill development and other aspects and what uh, water reaching a home also have a psychological impact it enhances the standard of living. So, that is the reason why government is very keen on this uh, Jal Jeevan mission special rural aspect and this Jal Jeevan mission is also focused on this village water, water and sanitation committee where uh, it is uh, people driven and, uh, and yeah, end to end approach. So, there is nothing but em so empowering people through this village uh, sanitation, uh, village water and sanitation committee and by this 6 lakh villages are being connected, 6 lakh villages are being connected through this particular uh, uh, mission. So, on this particular uh, Jal Jeevan mission they focus on 4 aspects, one is uh, sustainable sources, okay, sustainable source of water, sustainable source means throughout the year they need to have water and uh, throughout the requirement of all season they need to have water and next thing is they focus on water supply. So, they create necessary infrastructure to reach water and grey water treatment. So, grey water treatment, grey water treatment is primarily focused on reusable waters and next thing is operation and maintenance. These are all part of this Jal Jeevan mission and finally, paragraph 3. So, right now in India they are having this national project on aquifer management, one of the biggest programs in the world to uh, focus on formulation of aquifer management for sustainable use of groundwater, primarily focus on groundwater usage. So, these are the points. So, where all we can use this information is regarding water governance, especially we can say that rural development and the importance of water in the uh, society or any essay topics on importance of water, we can relate all these points and write the, write the required answers and means. Okay, thank you. <music>